Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Uh, Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with graphic online. Living Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College at the Life Cathedral in the Zoe Chapel, and we have two services on Sundays, Sunday 7 to 9 in the morning and 10 to 12 for our Sunday services, and then also for our midweek services on Wednesdays, 6.30, to eat. Make a day to this and enjoy yourself. This morning I like to, I'm, perhaps I'm in a very lighter mood, perhaps in a garrulous mood, and I like to share that, the, the lighter side, and let, let's create some fun, let's enjoy ourselves this morning. And this morning I like to capture my thoughts with godsgeography.com. Godsgeography.com. Now that's very interesting. For, I mean, I'm trying to be a high-tech person, you know, talking computer language and talking media and internet language. But here, that's the times and seasons in which we live. So, godsgeography.com. Godsgeography. That is godsgeography.com. And, uh, you know, sometimes geographies mean a lot to God. And there are some times when God begins to talk, he talks about... Um, different, different distances. And he mentions the locations. For example, Elisha was plowing in the fields of Abel Mahola. And even a, um, a Elijah, Elijah was from Tish, uh, Elijah the Tishbite. And Mary, and you know, that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And you know, God is not afraid to mention geographies. But in Genesis chapter 28, in the story of Jacob running away from the wrath of his brother, you know, his brother was very angry with him. And running away from the wrath of his brother, the Bible says he came to us. He he started walking towards um, a Haran near Be near Beersheba or Beersheba near Haran. You get it? And and the Bible was very very specific about the geography of his movement when he was walking. It mentioned Haran. It mentioned Beersheba. But then the Bible says something in Genesis chapter twenty-eight, verse eleven. That just set me thinking and got me very excited. And the Bible says, and he came to a certain place. And when he came to a certain place, you know, this guy is running from his brother. This guy is running tired. This guy is running away from his sister. And then he goes to places he knows. Heron comes to places, goes to places he knows, Beersheba. But then he comes to a certain place with no name. And here's the thing. Sometimes in God's dealings in your life, God brings you to uncertain places. That is places you cannot define. And those places, you can't define it. When somebody is asking you, are you crying? You say, yes. Are you laughing? I don't know. And it, those places defy reason. Those places defy comfort. Those places, it's like, wow. It's, it's a very uncomfortable place. And in that place of uncertainty, the Bible says Jacob picks a stone to put his head upon. It's an uncertain place. And the Bible is not shy to mention them. You mention Bathsheba, you mention Haran. Why don't you mention the name of a place? And the Bible said, a, a certain place, a place with no name. Sometimes since God dealings with you, he brings you to a place where you can't define that place at that material moment. There are things happening in your life or there are things taking place you have no control over. And if anybody asks you to be specific and name what the issues are, you don't even know. And sometimes God brings you to those uncertain places. And those uncertain places can be very confusing places. They can be wilderness places in your life. Places that you ha don't have a definition of. And you see, what you can't define, you can't dominate. If the doctors cannot define the, the malady or the illness that you, 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 you're suffering from, or the disease that is, uh, uh, that is hurting you, they can't dominate it. So what you can't define, you can't dominate. And that's the reason why, if you remember, God said to Adam, define everything. And after he had defined, he said, dominate them. So our definition brings do, uh, domination. So now Jacob was brought to a place he could not define. 
Because there was a transaction that was going to take place. And God said, I don't need your reasoning faculties. I just need your trust. I don't need your, your ability to, 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 to figure things out. You, Jacob, I know you. You're a calculating person. You figure things out. But I've brought you to an uncertain place. A place you don't know. A place you don't define. And guess what? That is the place I'm going to open possibilities for you. That is the place there's a divine transaction going to take place in your life. And I don't want you, I don't want any definition. So God left the definition open and called it an uncertain place. Now here comes the interesting thing. It was at that place that the heavens were open. He saw God. He heard God talk about blessing and all those other things. He saw revelations upon revelations, revelations upon revelations. But here's the principle. In verse 19 of that same chapter, the Bible says when God finished the transaction, when God finished dealing with J Jacob, when Jacob rose up, he said, how dreadful was this place? How terrible was this place? I didn't know even God was here. And he gave the place a name. He called the place Bethel. Then comes the staggering truth. Then comes the startling truth. That was like, what was going on over here? He said, for the place was formerly called Luz. The place was called formerly called Luz. So here's the thing. The place had a name. It was called Luz. But then when God made it, it was an uncertain place. No definition was given there because there was a transaction that was going to take place. And after that transaction, Jacob gets up and says, I know this is no more an uncertain place. This is Bethel. And Bethel means house of God. But the place had a, the place had a name and the place was called Luz. You know what Luz means? Growing. So God brings you to an uncertain place and the purpose of bringing you to that uncertain place is for you to grow. And by the time God finishes with you, you will say, wow, this is a house of God. That is, this is a place of endless possibilities. It, because the Bible says, it, 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 David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of God. Wow. So this is a place of gladness. Number two, the Bible says, at, at, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So Joseph was being brought to a place. And by the divine transaction upon his life, and by the experiences that he's going to go through, and the revelation he's going to go through, he is going to rise up there. Even though the place had a name, he was now going to call the place Bethel, house of, house of God. So that place, it was called Luz. Do you know why God brought you there for you to grow? For you to grow from the stage of dependence upon Father's blessing, to grow beyond, uh, beyond dependence upon other people's mercies, beyond dependence. God brings you to that place for you to grow in faith in him. God brings you to that place for you to grow in stature in him. God brings you to that place for you to grow in virtue in him. And at the end of the day, God's geography.com became clearer and clearer and clearer. So when you come to those uncertain places, that places of discomfort, that places where you have stones for your pillow, those places of discomfort, don't give up. You know what? He has brought you to a place for you to grow. And by the time you finish, he finishes with you, new definitions are going to arise out of your mouth. New dominations are going, new uh, uh, vistas are going to be before you. New places are going to be before you for you to dominate by your definition. So that place, even though it had no name, God is giving you the right to name that place by your experience. See you later. God'sGeography.com.